Family Theater presents Bonita Granville and Charlie Ruggles. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents transcribed Eclipse, starring Bonita Granville. And now to introduce the drama, here is your host, Charlie Ruggles. Thank you, Larry Chatterton. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray, pray together as a family. And now to our drama, Eclipse, starring Bonita Granville. I remember the bus terminal at Williamsfield. Jimmy had told me about Anne, the other girl, the girl he'd fallen in love with. Then the bus arrived, and Jimmy tried to help me into my coat. I snatched it away from him and hurried out across the wet sidewalk. The glass doors of the bus closed behind me, and I sat down. We swung onto the North Highway at the edge of town. The rain was swirling down in heavy sheets and blowing hard against the windshield. All of a sudden, the bus driver shouted something and, and spun the steering wheel sharply to the right. At the last moment, I saw it. A truck skidding out of control, sliding across the highway. Miss Hill, are you awake? I'm awake, doctor. How'd you sleep last night? I didn't. That pill didn't help at all? Not much. Young lady, I know this thing has been quite a shock, but it's almost two weeks since that accident. Medicine can do a lot, but, well, the patient has to pitch in too, you know. Can medicine fix what's wrong with me? Maybe. I don't know. I just can't get used to it, Dr. Racklin. Why, I'm blind. Miss Hill, did I ever tell you the story about the man with the celluloid head? The man with what? Yes, his celluloid head. Great man, bank president, university trustee. No one ever knew his secret. Oh, oh for heaven's sake. <laughs> no, no. Don't rub the bandages. It'll just burn all the more. All right, I won't. Now, listen, Miss Hill. We can try. I'm being honest. We can try, and there's a chance we'll be able to restore your vision. All of it? No, probably not. How much? I don't know, really. And I may not know for quite a while. But... Dr. Racklin? Uh, yes, nurse? There's a young man out here who would like to see you. One of your patients. It's me, Doc. Bill Chapman. Oh, be right along, Bill. Well, what do you say, young lady? Do we try it? If you think there's a chance. I think there is. <laughs> Heaven knows I've been wrong often enough, but it's worth trying. All right. All right, if you think so, we'll try it. <laughs> I didn't sleep that night either. But for the first time in two weeks, when morning came, I wasn't exhausted. And I learned something. How the blind can tell when it's morning. There's a wonderful hush that it seems to hang over everything just before the world wakes up. A kind of purple hush. Purple and gray. And yet, with a promise of something green and yellow, strange. All you know are the things you can hear, but your mind gives color to the noises, more color than they really have. I'd finished breakfast and was lying there in my own private darkness when I realized someone was talking to me. Miss Hill? Oh, yes? Oh, who's there? I couldn't tell if you were asleep or not. My name's Chapman, Bill Chapman. I... 
I was in that bus accident with you. Oh? Yeah, Doc Rackland tells me we're the only co-patients left here. Well, well, come in. Sit down, Mr. Chapman. Oh, thanks. I, I have a little trouble getting around. Were you badly hurt? Oh, no, 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 not bad. Slight fracture of the arm and I banged my leg up. I can manage okay with my cane, though. I, I didn't know you had a cane. These bandages on my eyes. Oh, sure. I, I forgot. Are you a friend of Dr. Rackland's? Oh, not really. We got acquainted since he's been taking care of me. I just felt like some company. I hope you don't mind my stopping by. Why, no. No, I'm glad for the chance to talk to someone. I, well, being like this I is... know. I guess it isn't any picnic. I'll tell you, I'll get you a radio in here. They have them for rent, you know. Why, that'd be wonderful. But why don't we just talk for a while? Sure. Is Williamsfield where you live? Used to be. I lived here with my aunt. But I work in Cleveland now. I mean, I worked in Cleveland. Oh, you'll be back there in no time. What did you do? Uh, Secretary, law firm. What do you know? That's my line. You're a lawyer? Well, it says so on the license. Of course, I've only been practicing for four years. Didn't even start law school until after the war. Korea? No, number two. I like it, though. A law, I mean. So do I. I say, if it's not too personal, what's the doc got in mind for you? Surgery? I guess so. Uh huh. Can you see anything at all? Not a thing. I try every time they change the bandages, but, well... Well, if you don't feel like talking about it... Oh, no. No, I want to talk about it. You can't imagine what it's like. It's... it's not quite blackness. It's more like a dark gray fog over your eyes. You keep thinking if you could just blow the fog away... Yeah, I can guess what it's like. Bill? Yes? What kind of a day is it? What kind? Oh, you mean the weather? Yes. Oh, it's warm, sunny. Great day to be alive. Well, if it isn't my two patients. Uh, morning, Doctor. Morning, Bill. Dr. Rackley? The same. I've got some news for you, young lady. Good news, I hope. Oh? We start tomorrow morning. On, on the operations? Well, not exactly. You'll be under anesthetic, but mostly we'll be trying to find out the extent of the damage and how much can be done about it. When will I know? Oh, I'd say we'll have a pretty good idea by tomorrow afternoon. So take it easy today. You'll need your strength. Well, if you don't think she ought to have any visitors around, Doc, I can move well, along. Well, well, I, I don't know. Oh, please let him stay, Doctor. I'll be quiet, I promise. Maybe Bill can read to me. Read to you? Sure, Doc. Say, I've got a new book. Good one, too, down in my room. I'll read that to her. All right, fine. Uh, uh, but just don't overdo it. We won't really. Well, <laughs> be on my way. See you in the morning, Marjorie. Bye, Bill. So long, Doc. Goodbye, Doctor. I like him. Everybody does. He's good at his job, too. One of the best. I know he can help me. If, if I had to stumble through life like this, why, I, I couldn't do it. Marjorie, I know it's tough, but you've got to get a hold of yourself. To be able to see anything. The sky, or, or even read anything. Say, why don't I hustle down to my room and get that book, huh? Oh, Billy's just got to help me. If I can't see again... My, I'd just as soon be dead. All the rest of that day, Bill Chapman read to me from the book of short stories his mother had brought him. His voice was quiet and restful. And as I lay there listening to him read, I tried to picture what he looked like. Did he have light hair or dark? Was he tall, thin, heavy? I couldn't decide. And then I realized that Bill's appearance didn't matter to me because it wasn't what he looked like that I found so pleasant. And I suddenly wondered how many friends I'd missed having just because there was some flaw in their appearance that kept me from wanting to know them better. Following morning at 7.30, I was taken down to surgery. And when I woke up almost three hours later, I realized I was back in my room again and, and that Bill was there. How you doing, lady? Bill? Right here. How do you feel? I, I don't know yet. All right, I guess. Doc Rackland came by while he was still under. He said he'd be back later. Did he... Did he say anything else? Just for you to take it easy. Would you pour me a glass of water, Bill? I'm dry as a bone. What? Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. There's a pitcher here on your bed table... 
and a glass. What? Is, is there anything wrong, Bill? No, no. It's my arm's just a little stiff from the accident. Oh, of course, I forgot. Ah, there we are. Now, uh, here, I'll hand you the glass. Hold out your hand. I'll hang on to it till you get a grip. <laughs> well, let's see, there. I've got it. Oh, thanks, Bill. You bet. Say, it's none of my business, but is that an engagement ring you're wearing? It was. I never noticed it before. Pretty, isn't it? I'm sure its donor will be glad to get it back. You're not going to do that just because of the accident, are you? Oh, no, Bill. It was all over before then. He found someone else. Well, he must have slipped his trolley. You're well rid of him. Oh, that's very sweet. Only possible explanation. Tell me, do you have a girl, Bill? Hundreds. I have to beat him off with a stick. No, seriously. Are you married? Would I live with my mother if I were married? All right, then. Are you engaged? In the practice of law, yes. Now, be serious. <laughs> Mr. Chapman. Yes, nurse. Could I see you out here for a minute? Sure thing. Now, don't go away. I'll have a whole new set of questions for you when you get back. Well, that didn't take long. Now, where were we? It's me, Miss Hill, Dr. Acklin. I wanted to talk to you alone. Doctor, Bill said you'd come by earlier. How, how does it look? Well, to be perfectly truthful, it doesn't look very encouraging. What do you mean? We've removed quite a few splinters of glass from each of your eyes the day of the accident. Remember my telling you that? Yes. At the time, we couldn't be sure how, how much permanent damage had been done. I know. I, I didn't tell you this, but we realized that from the start you'd probably never recover the sight of your left eye. It was too badly injured. There was a chance, though, that the other eye might be saved. And, and now you've found out that, that it can't be saved? I don't think so. Ever? You see, there are certain tissues in our body that replace themselves when they're injured or destroyed, and others that don't, that can't replace themselves. It's one of those things. There doesn't seem to be much reason for it, but the eye tissues you've injured do not have that regenerative faculty. I, I'm going to be blind all of my life. That's a big statement, Marjorie. The work that's been done in corneal transplants and graftings I are... mean, without that, without a miracle. Well, I don't want to rule out miracles, but for the moment, we can't bank on them either. Doctor. Now listen, Marjorie. I have had to tell this same thing to dozens of people that no. they probably aren't going to see anymore. It's a blow, a big one, but it isn't the end of their lives. Please, please go away. You'll probably feel better if you keep talking. No. No, I just want to be left alone. All right. Try to get some rest. <laughs> I'll be in to see you in the morning. For what? There's nothing you can do. Please go. I'll order you a sedative. You could use the sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I wanted to be alone. It's just the nurse, Miss Hill. Don't you want your lunch? No. There's a nice salad and some pudding. I don't want any. I know how you must feel, but you've got to eat something. I do not. Don't you understand English? I said no, no, no. Hill, now get out. Once and for all, get out and leave me alone. <laughs> What are you doing up and dressed? Have you gone out of your mind? I'm leaving. Leaving? You can't leave now. You're not equipped to look out for yourself. There's all sorts of training and orientation you'll need. I'll get along. Do you have any place to go? My aunt lives here in town, and I can stay with her for a while. And then what? What's it to you? Afraid you'll lose track of a good case history? That's a pleasant way to put it. I'm leaving, that's all. Nothing very complicated about it. No? How are you going to take care of yourself? How do I know? I've never been blind before. Will you leave me alone, please? All right. I can't make you stay here. Marjorie? Oh, are you out of bed? Hello, Bill. What's all the ruckus about? I've tried to talk her out of it, but she's determined to leave here. Well, you know women, Doc. Can I drop you anywhere, Marjorie? I'm checking out myself this morning. Bill, now listen My to... arm's okay, Doc. Little stiff, that's all. Besides, I don't practice law with it. But Bill... Mom's I... coming to pick me up in the car. 
How about it, Marjorie? Want a lift? Why, I... All right, Bill. I'd love one. I'm going to my aunt's house. Good. We'll go downstairs and wait in the lobby. Where's your bag? I think it's... Yes. The nurse put it on the bed. I'll take it, Bill. No. I've got it, Doc. I'll... I'll see you downstairs. Oh, we'll be all right. You go ahead and take care of your other patients. Okay? All right. Marjorie, if you change your mind about having more treatment... I don't see what good it can do now. You might be surprised. Come on, lady, take my arm. We'll keep in touch, Doc. Give my best to your mother, Bill. You bet, Doc. So long. I... I guess I said some pretty ungrateful things to Dr. Racklin. Oh, he's used to it. I, I know I shouldn't have, but... Oh, Bill. Bill, I'm blind. I'm going to be blind all my life. Come on now, one thing at a time. Let's go downstairs first. I want you to meet my mother. I, I've been trying... trying to ask you about this hospital. Is, is it pretty, Bill? Pretty? No, matter of fact, it isn't. It's built funny. Half Gothic, half French. And wait till you ride on the elevator. Genuine boob McNutt. <laughs> Is it safe? Oh, what's safe? It goes up and down. That's all you can ask. Here we are. <sighs> Made any plans, Marjorie? About what you're going to do? Do? I can't even get out of a building without someone to help me. There's nothing wrong with taking a little help now and then. You'd be surprised how few people do things all by themselves. Yes. But blind people don't do anything all by themselves. Morning, Mr. Chapman. Hi, Sam. Couple of customers for you. Yeah, step right in. Thank you. Checking out, Mr. Chapman? Yep. Can't stand the food. <laughs> the service is pretty sluggish, too. I don't eat here myself. Smart fella. You hear the Jorgensen fight last night? Yep. Yeah, glad I didn't bet with you. I saw him against Ross in the garden in 41. A real glass jaw. Mm, even then, huh? Oh, he's too old. He ought to get out. Main floor. Thanks. Take it easy, Sam. Be seeing you. Uh, bye, Mr. Chapman. Uh, bye, young lady. Goodbye. Slow down now. There's some steps here down to the front door. Bill. Bill, wait. What's the matter? I don't want your mother to see me. You better get that out of your head. She's going to see plenty of you from now on. No. No, Bill, it won't work. You're just trying to be nice. You bet I am. I'm doing pretty good, too. Bill, I'm blind. I, I can't let you start something like Miss that. Miss Hill, I'm beginning to think you're trying to trifle with my affections. Bill, don't you realize? I can't let you talk like this just because you feel sorry for me. Sorry for you? Lady, I'm in love with you. Oh, no. No, you're not. You're not. Bill, I thought you were going to be out in front. Oh, hi, Mom. I'm sorry. We got held up. Mom, this is Marjorie. Well, at last. Bill's been raving about you over the phone for the last two nights. How are you? Oh, Mrs. Chapman, please. Please make Bill understand. I can't do this to him. Tell me, Mom, is she beautiful? Well, uh, let me see... She has blonde hair. Didn't I tell you she sounded like a blonde? <laughs> yeah. How about dimensions? Well, about five foot three. Uh-huh. Very trim figure. <laughs> Skinny. I knew there was a reason why her voice echoed. <laughs> Bill. You know what I look like. Don't you? Not exactly. But I've guessed pretty well. Mrs. Chapman, what... What Bill's trying to tell you is that He's blind, too, Marjorie. He's been blind for almost eight years now. Bill. Yeah. So, you see, I'm... I'm really not feeling very sorry for you after all, Marjorie. But you couldn't be blind. Because I'm a lawyer? But you read stories to From me. From a book written in Braille. I can get around okay, too. I've got my cane. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Well, I'm an old patient of Doc Racklin's, and when he told me about you, I... Yes, I... I see. You... you just wanted to show me that being blind doesn't mean you... It doesn't mean you can't fall in love, honey. That's the main thing it doesn't mean. No, Bill, Bill, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything yet. Let's just see how things work out, huh? Now, you children wait here while I go pull up the car. You bet, Mom. 
Bill. Will I ever get really used to being blind? Have you ever gotten used to it? In a way. It's... Well, Dr. Racklin was right when he called it a whole new world. It isn't so bad. I suppose it might even be a pretty wonderful world if you had someone to share it with you. Marjorie. Well, I've got to start living in another world, and I, I can't think of anyone I'd rather share it with, Bill. Marjorie, you'll see. It's all different, and... In a way, it, it is pretty wonderful. In fact, I, I can't wait to show you all the wonderful things I've found. This is Charlie Ruggles again with just a thought before we say goodnight. I suppose the subject closest to all our hearts just now is peace and how to find it. If we turn to God, talk to him, really pray with a faith that he will hear our prayers, we will find an inner peace. The man who is at peace with himself is at peace with his neighbor. Prayer and prayer alone can bring peace to the world. God is ready to give us much if we ask him. Is it so hard to ask? Is it too difficult to take a little time each day to be alone with God? To sit in silence and pray to him? Gather all those minutes you waste as a rule and utilize them for the wonderful purpose of prayer and see how your life changes, how much more happiness you find how different your fellow man appears and acts. It's worth the trial, isn't it? So pray with your family and experience greater joy in one another, in your home and in God. Yes, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has presented Eclipse, starring Bonita Granville. Charlie Ruggles was your host. Others in our cast were Verna Felton, Loni Blackman, John Stevenson, Pat McGeehan, and Bob Emlin. The script was written by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us again next week when Family Theater will present Gene Lockhart. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.